In this video, we're going to be looking at the basic surgical instruments and how to handle them as related to oral surgery. These are not all the instruments that you will ever encounter, but these are the most common ones. So as we present them, we will try to explain what they're used for, but also we're going to do is to show you how to pass them or handle them as you deliver them uh, to the dental surgeon. As far as handling the instruments, we will show you the most typical way to handle surgical instruments as you pass them to the surgeon. Also, surgeons that are trained in different places will have different ways of doing things. And if that be the case, take the lead from the surgeon and pass the instruments to them the way that they request.
What you see here is a rangeur and a bone file. The rangeur is used to cut bone and it is not unlike a fingernail clipper in that it pinches the bone from the blade on both sides. It is used for cutting bone away and then the bone file is used in conjunction with the rangeur and it is a simple file that is used for sp smoothing rough edges of bone. Both of these instruments are used routinely in oral surgery. One thing that you can notice about the rangeur right away are the springs found within the handles. This is so that when the surgeon squeezes the handles, as soon as pressure is relieved, it will open again. This is different than you will find on any other surgical instrument that has a handle, a hinge, and beaks. When it comes to handling these instruments, the hinge becomes a very important part for you, the dental assistant, because most often you will grasp the instrument by the beaks and the hinge. This will allow the surgeon to be able to grasp hold of the handle. Keep this in mind as we look at a variety of instruments that are constructed in a similar way. When looking at the rangeur's beaks, one of the things to notice right away that there is a scooped out portion in the center and that when the beaks are closed, you'll notice that the edges come into tight contact with one another and the edges themselves have a sharp edge. It's not razor sharp, but it is sharp. This is in distinct contrast to a forcep that is used for extraction of teeth where they have a scooped out edge as well, but their edges are not sharp. What you see here is one end of a bone file. Bone files typically are double-ended instruments with a bone file on one end that is small and the other end is large. Their principal function is to smooth rough edges of bone. One thing for the assistant to bear in mind as he or she works with the bone file, when the surgeon hands it back to you, there will be little pieces of bone and blood found within the blade of the bone file. Take a 2x2 two two and clean this out before it has a chance to dry. If there was ever an instrument that epitomizes the surgeon, it would be the scalpel. In the previous century, scalpels were very often a single unit, meaning a handle and a blade. As the blade became dull, it was the responsibility of the surgeon or the surgeon's assistant to sharpen the blade back to a razor sharpness. Today the blades are disposable and the handles are kept to be used again and again. Because of this feature, it is also now the responsibility of the dental assistant or the surgical assistant to load the handle onto the blade. Because of you working as a volunteer, we are not going to expect you to do this, but rather the full-time assistants will be setting up these scalpels and that you may be working with the surgeon to pass them over. Do not attempt to assemble or disassemble one of these instruments unless that you have been personally trained by one of the full-time staff. Shown here are the three most common surgical blades that you're going to find in dentistry. On the left is the number 12 blade, which is characterized by a hook. In the center, the number 15 blade, which is characterized as a cutting blade that you most typically would be looking for. And then lastly on the right is a number 11 blade. This blade is very commonly used to do what is called an IND or an incise and drain when people have abscesses. The sharp point of the blade pierces through the abscess releasing the suppuration and blood that is causing so much of the pressure and with it the pain. In this photograph you can see how the dental assistant is holding the scalpel. Notice several things. First, the handle is exposed so the surgeon can grab it. The instrument is being handled close to the blade, but not to crowd the blade so as to jeopardize the safety of the fingers. And third, notice that the point of the blade and the blade itself are pointing downward. In this way, the blade is away from the palm of the hand, and by passing this way, the surgeon can receive the instrument safely and at the same time the dental assistant or the surgical assistant is able to pass it also safely. This is crucial for the safety of the staff. It must be emphasized at this point that proper protocol must be followed for safety of both the staff and the surgeon. As can be seen in this photograph, notice that the blade is pointing up. If this be the case, the assistant is at risk 
If the instrument transfer is not smooth and the surgeon's hand hits the handle, it's possible to rotate the blade up into the palm of the assistant's hand, thereby cutting the assistant. It is important to keep the blade pointed away from the hand at all times. Notice the relationship between the assistant's hand and the surgeon's hand. The assistant is holding the scalpel in the way that was presented in the previous photograph. In this photograph, notice that the assistant is placing the handle into the palm of the hand. Once it is placed, the assistant will hold on to the instrument until the thumb of the surgeon comes down to grasp hold. At that point, the assistant is free to move their hand away. Do not let go of the instrument until you can see that the thumb is now down on the instrument and grasping it. The surgeons that you're going to be working with are very, very experienced and they have a way of doing things that is safe and effective. In an individual circumstance, let the assistant show you how the surgeon likes it or if you're working directly with the surgeon, have the surgeon show you the techniques that they want you to employ. Because these instruments are so sharp, safety is of paramount concern. It is the responsibility of both the surgeon and the assistant to be able to function together. If this is not coming naturally, it is the responsibility then to practice outside of the clinic environment until these transfers can be smooth and flowing and at the same time very, very safe. In the same way that various team members of sports teams have to work together to become proficient in their craft, the same thing is going to be true for assistants and surgeons working together. So, as you work with these people, be mindful of what they do and take your lead again from them so that they will show you the way that is most effective based on their experience. Another common surgical instrument that you will be introduced to is the suture needle. In modern medicine, we find that the needle and the thread are connected together. This connection at the end is called the swedge. The swedge is nothing but a hollow tube in the needle where the thread is inserted and then pinched so they form one unit. It is very important when handling a suture needle that you do not damage or injure the swedge area as this may cause a separation of the suture material. If this should occur, this causes the suture needle to be useless. As you can see in these images, the suture material is in fact in two packages. The outer package, which is used in general storage, and the inner package, which will be found at the surgical site. The inner package is completely sterile, and as it is opened, it should be opened in such a way as to protect the suture from contamination. As you can see, as the cover is taken off, there will be a white under portion that actually holds the suture and the suture material. Peel back the corner and you can see the needle. This is going to be grasped with the needle forceps and gently removed, revealing or pulling out all of the suture material. Pull slowly so as not to cause knots as the material is being pulled out. The needle will be grasped by the needle holder and then passed over to the surgeon. One thing to be mindful of is as you choose your instrumentation, make sure that you're actually holding on to a needle holder and not onto a hemostat. The basic difference is a needle holder is used exclusively to hold suture needles. The hemostat, on the other hand, is used to pinch or to close off blood vessels during a surgical procedure so to minimize blood flow. They look the same, but they are fundamentally different in their design. Both are similar in that they have finger rings, they have beaks, they have hinges. The difference, though, is found in the beak themselves, and as you look at it, you will notice that the crosshatch pattern that is found on one instrument is that of the needle holder. In the next image, you will find four pairs of scissors. Each one has their own use, and in a surgical environment, it is important to make sure that the proper instruments are being used, those of surgical, surgical scissors, particularly as you will find commonly used in dentistry, iris scissors, and then also Dean scissors. There are many, many different kinds of scissors found in dentistry. And so when you set up your tray, allow for the full-time assistant to help you find the appropriate scissors to be used. With regard to suture scissors, suture scissors are immediately noticeable because they have a notch at the tip. 
This notch is there to facilitate the removal of suture. In the next series of images, you can see the dental assistant holding the scissors by the beak area and particularly in the region of the hinge. This is to allow the surgeon to be able to grasp the instrument. As the surgeon is ready to receive a pair of scissors, he or she will hold out their hand in such a way that the assistant can place the finger rings onto the palm of the hand. The assistant will then hold the instrument where it is until such time that they can see that the thumb has pushed down on top of the instrument, thus grasping it. At this time, the assistant is free to let go. In the next several videos, you're going to be seeing some scissors being held by the assistant. They're being held in three different ways. The first way is where the forefinger is being held in the, in the ring along with the thumb. The second way is that the middle finger is being held in the ring and the thumb. The third way is the ring finger is being held in the ring along with the thumb. The third way is the way that you would want to do it. In this way, the thumb and the ring finger are supporting the rings. The middle finger is supporting adjacent to the ring. And then lastly, the forefinger is up on the side of the instrument to give it stability. This is critical in order to be able to adequately hold or manage the instrument in the surgical environment. This is a pair of Edson tissue forceps. You can notice them right away by the very sharp tips that they have. They're designed to grasp hold of tissues and are particularly useful to support the tissues as the surgeon is suturing those same tissues. The instruments presented here are surgical curettes and root picks. These are designed to remove small pieces of bone, abscesses, and roots that may be found within the alveolar sockets during an extraction process. These instruments look remarkably like screwdrivers. However, I understand they are not. Their specific design is that to elevate teeth from the socket. And they are called elevators. In these images, you can see how the assistant is to hold the elevator. They are to hold it from the working end, presenting the handle to the surgeon. In the next image, you can see how the surgeon is going to be holding it. And so when the assistant places the instrument into the palm of the hand, the surgeon will then grab it, and then the assistant can then let it go. In these last two images, you can see how the surgeon will usually hold the instrument, usually by the palm, or possibly by the modified pen grasp. In these last several photographs, we're going to be showing you some extraction forceps. First of all, notice their general shape, and then secondarily, notice that they each one have numbers stamped into the end. Some of the surgeons will call the instruments by name, such as an upper universal, or they may call it by its number, in this case, a number 150. It's important to understand both the names and the numbers because the surgeons will work with both terminologies. As is illustrated here, you can see that the assistant is holding the instrument by the hinge. This way the handle is made available to the doctor. When placing the instrument, understand the general curve of the instrument, the curve in the handle, is going to be placed into the hollow of the palm. So it doesn't really matter what instrument that you're going to be placing. If the handle has a curve, it will be placed into the hand the same way. Again, notice how the instrument is being held by the assistant, whether it be an upper instrument or a lower instrument. Notice also the way that the instrument is being passed to the surgeon and the curvature into the palm of the hand. This concludes our introductory material to oral surgery instruments and some of their handling. If you have any questions, feel free to ask the staff and they'll be happy to help you. Thank you.